Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Christine Biglin from St. Mary's County Library, and tonight we are joined by Barb Whipke, the owner of the Wild Birds Unlimited stores in Lexington Park and La Plata, uh, and we are going to be talking all about goldfinches tonight, and the program is called Good as Gold. Welcome, Barb. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. So I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so Good as Gold is going to be our subject for tonight, and we're going to talk about American Goldfinch. And this is the perfect time if you have not had goldfinch in your yard to get them into your yard because they are nesting. They are our last nesters of the year. They wait to nest because they are a strictly vegetarian bird. So they wait until the end of summer when things go to seed. Unfortunately, this year, because of the drought, things have not gone to seed as much as they normally do. So the benefit to you is if you put out those seeds, you are more likely than any other year to get those birds into your feeders. So this is gonna be really beneficial if you've been wanting to get those goldfinch into your feeders. So we're gonna show you everything you need to know about bringing those in. So on this photo here, the bird tucked behind the flower is the female. The male is the one to the right. You're going to easily be able to tell when you look at your feeders though, which one is the male. The male is the really bright yellow pretty one. The males always get to be the pretty birds. And that's because the females are usually the ones sitting on the nest. So we want them to be a little bit more camouflaged, a little bit more subdued. So again, on this picture, with that said, you can see that one on the male, uh, the one on the left is the male, the bright yellow with the little black cap there. That's your male, your females on the right. Goldfinches are found all across North America, and there's actually three species of goldfinches. The American goldfinch, which is the only goldfinch that we have here, the lesser goldfinch, and the Lawrence goldfinch. A lot of people, you're going to hear them talk about the canaries, but they're actually a member of the finch family. They're not a member of the canary family. Some of the basics. Goldfinches inhabit most parts of the U.S. They generally move into the northern parts of the U.S. during mating season. It gets a little too hot down in Florida, down in the deep south. So during the summer months, they move north. So there's part of the year early in the summer, in the late, late spring, where your yard is just inundated with goldfinch. That's during the migration. The same thing happens in the fall as they move back through as they're migrating. So right now, what you're seeing is all of those that are nesting. The big surprise for a lot of people is that we keep goldfinches year round. So a lot of people are amazed when they hear that the goldfinch are actually here with us year round. And the reason you may not recognize them in the summer is goldfinch molt twice a year. So when they are finished nesting, they're going to lose that pretty sexy breeding plumage that they have on. And they're going to put on their winter drab feathers. That's kind of an almost an olive green looking color. You're not going to see those pretty yellow birds this winter. So you're going to have to look a little closer. But if you have your finch feeders up, it's going to be a little bit easier to tell when those plain Jane greenish looking birds continue coming to the feeder that that's still your goldfinches. So just remember that, that those goldfinch are here year round in Southern Maryland. So what foods do you need to bring them in? There's three basic foods that you can use. Niger, notice I said Niger, not thistle. 
when you see them on the natural plants, the, th the thistle that grows wild, that is thistle. Thistle is rarely grown for seed in the U.S. It can be grown, but it's expensive to grow it. It's, it's not very cost productive. How about that? To grow it. So it's just not grown in the U.S. So Niger ends up having to be imported into the U.S. So the little black seed that you see us selling in the store, it's just, it, although it looks like thistle, it is actually Niger. So if you come in and ask us for thistle, we'll know what you're talking to, talking about, but we're going to refer to it as Niger when we're talking to you about it. It's two different seeds. You're actually buying Niger in the store. With that said, Niger has to be heat treated before it comes into the U.S. because of the risk of it bringing weeds into the U.S. that we do not want here. So Niger is the only seed that has to be imported. The plus for you is in the process of that heat treating, there's something about that that makes most squirrels turn their nose up to it. So if you're hanging your finch feeder where it's not squirrel proofed, then you probably wanna stick with straight Niger. If your finch feeder is in a location where you have a baffle on it or squirrels cannot get to it, then you can add some sunflower chips to it, which is what we then refer to as finch blend. So you'll see now this Niger has some little tan colored chips in there. And that's just sunflower chips that have been chopped fine and are still small enough to go through your finch feeder. So these are the two favorite foods of the goldfinch and also the house finches. But when you put this up, that will also entice the squirrels in. So you only want to switch to this one if you're truly squirrel proof. But it is a favorite. Um, when I put the two out of these just to do a test to see which the house finches prefer, or I'm sorry, the goldfinches prefer, it's definitely the finch blend that they prefer over the straight Niger. But they're happy with the Niger if that's all they can get. So just pay attention to how your feeders are set up. If you can't squirrel proof it, stay Niger or go with a squirrel proof feeder. Black oil sunflower is another one that you can use. Um, with that said, if you have just good old sunflowers planted in your yard, you can just let those dry and go to seed. Um, in this case, we have these little dried sunflower heads. Um, so you can do the same, just good old sunflower heads, let those dry out there in the field. And the goldfinch, you'll see those all over them. And it makes some really cute pictures when you see the sunflowers, uh, the goldfinch going after those sunflowers. So there's where your black oil sunflower will come in. So that's gonna be their three favorite seeds. So as I already mentioned, goldfinches are one of the strictest vegetarians in the bird world, which is why they wait to nest until they're sure that seed is going to be plentiful. Because that Niger seed is imported, it is going to be the oldest seed that you're going to find in most stores. So when you buy that seed, fill your feeders, make sure to keep it in a cool area to try to keep it as fresh as possible. You can even put, seal it up and pop it in a refrigerator if you want to help keep it fresh. Goldfinches are also very fickle little birds. So, you know, you come to know that that chickadee's always sitting there, that cardinal's always sitting there and goes to that perch and that feeder. Goldfinches are here today, gone tomorrow. The goldfinch you're feeding today may not be the same ones you're feeding tomorrow. So your best bet at keeping those goldfinches coming back is to make sure that you're keeping fresh seed out there. So that seed that's in the feeder, you want to make sure you're rotating it and changing it out 
every three to four weeks. So if that seed has been there more than three, four weeks, it's time to change that out. You don't have to throw it out. You, If you've got a tray feed or something like that, you can put it down there. The other birds, squirrels, whoever will help eat that. But definitely the seed that's in your finch feeder, you want to make sure you're changing that out. Also keep your seeds clean and dry. On your finch feeder, I always recommend adding a weather guard to help keep that seed drier longer. Okay, here's stuck. Hang on a second. So a weather guard like this on your feeder is going to help keep that seed dry. And then try to find, if you can find a finch feeder that opens at the bottom, that's very helpful. Goldfinches do this finicky little thing where they like to eat from the top perches. So if they come up, they're usually going to start filling the feeder to eat from the top perches. So when you go to put fresh seed, if you've got a feeder that you can fill from the bottom, when you put fresh seed in it, put it in from the bottom. Then that old seed is going to be on the top. So they're helping that way by eating the oldest seed first, and that's gonna help you to keep that seed circulated in there. Another thing, once a week, go out, give that feeder a shake. If the seed in the port got wet, that's just gonna help loft it up and move that little piece away and put some fresh seed out there at the edge for them. If you have a feeder like this that has the mesh on it, I really recommend it on this style, sticking with the straight Niger. Niger has a shell on it, so it will help protect it from the elements where the sunflower chips has no shell to protect it. I'm not saying you can't use the finch blend in here, but you might waste a little bit more and have to change it a little more often. So if you're using the finch, finch blend in here, you may want to not fill it all the way up if they're not eating it really quickly. Right now I have four finch feeders up and I am filling it more than once a week right now. I filled it on Sunday and this afternoon I noticed that I need to fill them all up again this evening or tomorrow morning because they are all getting low. But that's just because I'm keeping the fresh Niger out there or the Finch Blend is what I'm using. So they know that there's plenty of food there and they're coming after it. So feeders, um, I talked about the perch one. That was the first one I showed you. This is the mesh style. And then we're gonna talk about socks. Good old socks. You can get them in the white, like in that picture. This is a yellow one. This is my absolute least favorite kind of feeder. I will do everything possible to convince you not to buy these. You are going to waste so much seed with this style of feeder. Normally in Southern Maryland, of course, not this year, but normally we're getting lots of rain. Every time this gets wet, you need to toss that seed and refill this again. When the wind's blowing hard, the seed is also blowing out of these. If you're buying these already filled with seed, who knows how old that seed is in there. And as I've already said, that seed is the oldest seed that you can buy because it's had to be heat treated before it came into the U.S. So I really don't recommend the Niger socks at all. But if you're adamant about using them, then look for a weather guard that you can hang above it. That will help you some with protecting it, but still you're you can plan on going through a lot of seed with those. 
um, choose feeders that are easy to clean. Again, that's a plus with the style that opens at the bottom. If you find these that open at the bottom, open at the top, it's gonna be nice and easy just to run a brush through there to clean it. So I'm a huge fan of any that open at the bottom and top for any style feeders. Um, keep the, it, those seeds clean and dry by using those weather guards. A little trick when you're hanging feeders. So if you have a pole system that has multiple hooks on it at different heights, your finch feeders are always going to go on the highest hooks. So if you have three or four hooks and they're different heights, hang the finch feeder from the highest hook. Just like the finch prefer to eat from the top ports, they also prefer to eat from the highest location. So hang those feeders up as high as you can for your finch ones. Uh, we talked about filling your feeders, but cleaning your feeders, again, they're finicky little birds. They will take off and leave you for the neighbors in a heartbeat if their feeders are cleaner than yours. So make sure you're cleaning those feeders every three weeks or so. If the feeder's been really busy and it's looking grimy, fill it, clean it more often if you need to. Finches are prone to uh, finch eye disease, which is similar to like pink eye for humans. It's extremely contagious. So if you see any sign of that with your finches and you're going to know it, you're gonna see a finch out there and he's trying to land, he or she, and they're just, like struggling to find that port or they get on there and they just sit for an hour or so on that port. And that's because they're basically not able to see out of that eye. In that case, you're going to not only wash your feeders with a good soap and water, but you're then going to disinfect them with one part bleach, nine parts water, rinse them really well, let them air dry, and then refill them. If you're able to catch that finch, you're going to want to get it to a rehabber. And you can go on the Maryland Department of Natural Resources website to find a licensed wildlife rehabber to take them to to get them treated. But it's very contagious, like, just like when pink eye goes around the school, same thing can happen at your feeders, only contagious to finches, but it will go around your feeders. So you don't want to get that started there. Okay, because of their strict seed diet, they're not getting moisture from insects or berries. They need lots of water. So you're going to see your goldfinch at your bird baths a lot. So they're going to be looking for lots of water. Have you noticed goldfinches in your hummingbird feeders, in your ant moats, or any little cups you have around? They are always looking for a source for water. So if you can hang a dripper or a mister, we have little misters that can be put on bird baths. Um, there's misters that you can put, you can wrap around bushes and it just sprays a mist. Um, little cups, just little tiny cups like this that can be hung. They love little tiny dishes of water. You've probably seen them coming, popping into your hummingbird feeder if you've got the, the well in the middle that you fill with water to keep the ants out. They love to come and drink from those. And that's why, because they're on that seed diet, they're not getting the added moisture from the berries, from the insects. So they're looking for more sources for water. So lots and lots of water at your house if you wanna keep those goldfinches there. Um, just setting up a sprinkler somewhere in the yard um, with a pan underneath it to catch some water and you're going to see the goldfinch in it. And you also, the added benefit, you're gonna see the same with the hummingbirds. They love to get in those as well. So we also talked about the goldfinches nesting later in the season. 
here in Southern Maryland. That's going to be from late August to September. So you're going to see a lot of nesting behavior going on right now. You'll start to see them bringing the young to the feeders. They prefer, their preferred location is about 30 feet up in a tree. However, more often, just because of location, they tend to be about three to 10 feet high on the ground, a dense shrub or tree, typically in the fork. They will weave a very tight nest. Um, it's typically so tight that that nest can actually hold water. They use milkweed, cattails, and dandelion, the fluff from those to make their nest. There's also um, little balls like this that you can put out with nesting material. They love to grab from these to build their nest. Typically, once a female finds a good location, a bush that she likes, she does tend to come back to that same general area each year. Most goldfinch will only raise one brood a year, although sometimes a veteran female may produce an additional brood. If she does that, she'll leave her first mate to take care of the first brood and find a new partner to raise that second brood. So the female goldfinch chooses her nest site. She builds the nest and incubates the eggs on her own. All of that is her job. As the nestlings start to grow a little bit older, the first four days she feeds the young. But after those first four days, the male starts to take on more of the feeding of the young. And this is just a little bit of the basic information. Uh, two to seven eggs is the typical eggs. Like I said, one to two broods, but the norm by far is a single brood unless they're a more experienced and then they will sometimes do that second brood. She's going to set on those eggs for 12 to 14 days. She's going to lay those full. She'll lay an egg a day, not, not start setting until she has a full clutch. The babies, once they hatch, will be in that nest for 11 to 17 days. The egg is going to be a pale bluish, almost white looking egg. And sometimes there's going to be faint brown spots around the bigger end of the egg. And then I've got just a few little fun facts here. The gold finch is the only member of its family that does two complete molts a year. So you're probably right now, you're seeing a lot of birds out there that are bald. Cardinals and blue jays look the worst right now. At the end of nesting, most of our songbirds completely lose their feathers and go through a molt as they get ready and put on their winter feathers, just kind of like our pets do the same. But with goldfinch, they molt twice a year. So in the spring, they put on that sexy breeding plumage. And then once they're done nesting, you're going to see them start to lose that. And they'll molt into that dull gray or dull green looking color I mentioned. So where most of the birds will grab their seed and then take off somewhere to eat it, goldfinch tend to dine and stay around. So if you have plenty of perches or places to hang around, they will stay. So this is one of the reasons that I mentioned that I have four finch feeders going right now. And I mean, they are going right now. So most of the time of the year, I do not have that many finch feeders going, but I just kind of watch. And when activity ramps up, then I add more finch feeders. That's what we refer to as being seasonally savvy. As we go into the fall and the colder months, I'll start to add more fat feeders for the birds for the winter months. Just another seasonally savvy thing. A group of birds, um, a group of goldfinches is called a charm of goldfinches. 
And then you've watched, you know, your bluebirds, things like that, bringing worms and insects back to feed their young. But with the goldfinch, they will actually come back with a crop full of digested food or partially digested food and regurgitate that to feed their young. And that when they bring it back, they're going to have enough to feed the entire brood. So they typically will only come back and feed them about twice each hour. So if you were to happen to be lucky enough and you're watching a nest that you found, don't get concerned, you know, because we're used to watching those bluebirds and things where they're just in and out every few seconds. With goldfinches, you're not going to see that activity because they're going to come back, feed them, and be gone for quite a while. Okay, so what questions do you have for goldfinch or any other birds right now? Okay, I didn't get any questions in the chat, um, but seeing as you finished your presentation, people are welcome to unmute themselves if they just want to ask the question. Sometimes that's easier than typing it in. Um, I'm finding it interesting to see while people are thinking if they have questions. Um, I am finding it interesting that uh, the bird dads are very different from each other because um, it's you, you got involved dads with the goldfinches and then you have kind of the deadbeat dads with the hummingbirds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh and I thought it was also funny that the uh the females are a little bit of a swinger sometimes. <laughs> right. Yes. One other thing I will mention too, if anybody has problem with your finch food clumping up in there, feeder fresh is a great product that you can use. This is basically the same you know, little packages that come with computers and purses and shoes. You can sprinkle some of that in your seed and that will help pull the moisture out of your seed. So that's a really good product that you can put in. You just put, put a little layer of it in and then every time you put some more seed, put another little layer. If the birds eat it, it will not hurt them. Truthfully, most of the time, they're going to know that it's not food and most likely would not eat them. Uh, but that's a, a great product, too, that you can you, you can oh, actually well, use it with any seed. So if any of your feeders you're having that problem with. What's that called? It's called Feeder Fresh. Let me take this oh. off there. Um, oh, okay. I haven't heard of that before. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't remember you mentioning it before. Yes. And you said that's that's the stuff that's in those little packages um like in you know as packaging material like the you know those little things that you're not supposed to let the dogs eat hey, is correct. that what you're talking exactly. about those yeah. oh yeah mm. okay but yeah hopefully you can see that a little better now yes feet are fresh and you said you can loosely sprinkle that in yeah just sprinkle that in the bottom of it like i said any feeders you can put that in and it keeps helps keep the seed dry mm -hmm. just from humidity yeah. and stuff. Oh. Yeah, even like your seed can in that, if you're having that problem with humidity and that in there, you can do it in there as well. Oh, okay. That's cool. Oh, did this somebody, did, Peggy, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I'm actually sitting out here looking at my feeders. Um, I don't have a finch feeder. Do they only eat from finch type? feeders or do they go because I noticed I haven't seen any at the other feeders so they will eat from other feeders but here's one of the problems with goldfinches is they tend to be an extremely polite little bird oh. if your other feeders are really busy which a lot of people's feeders are really busy right now yeah they will tend to sit up here and wait for a port to open in fact, we have this one little branch that was designed specifically with the goldfinch in mind, because what we would find is they would sit up here, wait for a port to open, and then by the time they flew from that tree to the port, somebody else had taken it. So our people that make our pole system for us actually designed this piece 
that could be attached to our pole to give them a, a waiting spot nearby the other feeders so they could wait closer to the feeding ports. So by putting a feeder that's only for the goldfinch, it cuts down the competition. Okay. With that said, they will definitely come and eat from the other feeders. Um, I would recommend having something with sunflower chips. Um, I did grab, if you're feeding cylinders, the no mess cylinders are a great one to feed because that's those uh, sunflower chips I talked about. If squirrels are a problem, the hot pepper version is a great solution there. No, 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 no. These squirrels love it. They oh. love the hot pepper. Ver it, yeah, it oh. doesn't make a difference. Yeah, they're eating it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Works great at my house. So an acquired taste over here. <laughs> so if that happens, you can stop it for a while and then try it again. Or of course, try, um, we've got a squirrel proof feeder you can try, the pole system with the baffle. So yeah, I actually have the pole system with the baffle and all that. I don't have a place to put it up yet because my sister's insisting I put it in the mulch, but it's too close to the trees and the squirrels are put on it that way. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. We got to get through happy. this debate. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So we have a sunfire chip uh, that is a hot pepper seed that you could try that it's a different variety. It's a loose mm -hmm. seed. Might be an option. Okay. Okay. Oh, Vicki. Oh, I think you're still, we're not hearing you. No, that didn't do it. It, it. Like I can see, it looks like you're unmuted. I mean, you were, you're muted right now. Oh, do you want to type holding, it? Try holding down your spice bar and see if that will work. Just hold it down and talk and see if that will work. Mm, no. Oh, I'm sorry. That's too bad. If you want, you can type there it into are. the chat. Go ahead, Vicki. Can you hear me now? Yes. I just started feeding birds this spring. And I've gotten through the summer watching your programs. Is there any chance that now that we're getting closer to the winter months you'll do a program on the birds that stay all year and what we can feed differently so yeah um did you hear barb are you I able did. to hear um okay are you able to come into the store for a program my my daughter my daughter does all my shopping Okay. So don't, I'll just, I keep getting little hints every time. Right. Yeah. So the next one we're doing in October, the three birds we'll be talking about, we'll be talking about three there. And those are all three that will stay. Honestly, most of the birds that are feeder birds, the majority of them do stay year round. So we're very lucky in Southern Maryland here that the majority of our feeder birds do stay year round. So at least the cool ones anyway. Uh, the only thing we do run into is sometimes we have an eruption year where we do get a few extra ones. And in October, if we find out some of those are coming, we'll definitely talk about those in October. We'll squeeze those in and discuss those okay well thank you <laughs> uh -huh. um well barb before we opened the show uh, the program you were telling me that people have been seeing baltimore orioles right yeah so oh, cool. you know baltimore orioles are even though it's our state bird we rarely see them here in southern maryland but we have a crazy number of customers who have been fortunate enough to see their first baltimore oriole this year they started migrating through a little earlier and they are staying a little longer. 
So if you ever want to see a Baltimore Oriole, definitely get those foods out there. Um, of course, the typical is oranges and the grape jelly, but we're seeing, getting a lot of reports of them eating the bark butter bits as well this year. So um, we have noticed the last several years, we've had customers who have kept them through the winter with our more milder winters. And we do notice when they stay in the winter months, they do tend to heat, eat higher fat foods, uh, peanuts, mealworms, bark butter bits, and suets. So I would just, my recommendation would be to put up a little bit of both because in the beginning, the first ones coming through, we were hearing, yes, they were going for the oranges and the grape jelly. And the ones this week were hearing, getting more reports, because that's always my question, what were they eating? And the tail end ones this week, we're starting to hear more suet and bark butter bits. So it feels like they're starting to shift to more higher fat foods. But again, nature has not been very kind to the wildlife and, you know, the birds this year. So I think they are coming to our feeders for a little extra handout this year. You know, normally this year, every other customer would be saying, where are my birds? And this year, instead, we're hearing the birds are eating me out of house and home. So it's, they're relying on our feeders a little more than they normally do this time of year. Um, and when you said grape jelly, um, I think you've said before, it's not the commercial jelly yes. that we eat, right? It has yeah. to be for the birds. Yeah. So okay. um, you want to get a grape jelly that's designed for the birds. Um, you know, we don't want to turn them all diabetic, um, but it's uh, very low in sugar. And I can tell you it tastes nasty. Um, the team held me to a challenge <laughs> last year and I had to eat. Uh, bark butter with grape jelly and neither one of them tastes good at all I can promise you it's not like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich um, but it is much healthier for the birds it was bad yeah, I <laughs> yeah well, bark butter for is gritty like I, the best I can describe is like when you're at the beach and you get sand in your sand <laughs> sandwich that's exactly yum, what it was like. Yum. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that was when nice will of you to have your winter blend in the store? Um, probably within the next week. Yes. What about right the now, Christmas blend? A Christmas blend. I got noticed today that it is inbound from Texas. Oh. <laughs> Christmas blend is coming. Yes, everybody loves the Christmas blend. Um, right now we are still recommending nesting blend a little bit longer because we are noticing a lot of young fledglings still at the feeders and also, um, a lot of the molting birds, the same food that they need for nesting is the same foods that they need. It's the high protein, high calcium foods that they need. Feathers are made out of a lot of calcium or protein. So we are trying to help them over that hump for the molt. So will goldfinches go for the nesting blend? They actually do. Um, they don't go for the worms that's in oh. it, but they go for the other things that are in it. Right, because they're vegetarians, so they exactly. would not be eating the worms. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great question on that one. Yep. Interesting. I never really thought of birds being vegetarian or not, but yeah, if that makes sense. The bugs and the worms. Uh -huh. yes! Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that one is not a vegetarian. That's right. He's like, give me the meat. <laughs> yes. she is, she's not a vegetarian, but she loves bark butter. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of dogs like the bark butter. Mm. No, I can believe that. Oh, and Barb, you told me you saw something new at your feeder this week, right? I did. Um, Tuesday, I saw a black-throated blue warbler. Mm. Um, 
and it wasn't actually eating from the feeder. It was just kind of bouncing around. Uh, very cute little bird, small like a chickadee. Caught my attention because it was such an unusual little flight pattern. But that was a new. Do you have a picture? Um, I don't have one with me. No, um, didn't. I grabbed a quick one, but it wasn't even a, a good one. It was just enough to prove that it was on my feeder and I truly did see it. Uh, but it was, it's small like a chickadee, a pretty little bird, but very fast. And that was a blue-throated black warbler? Black-throated blue warbler. <laughs> okay, <laughs> completely wrong. Okay. You had it all in there. Yep, black-throated blue warbler. Okay, I'll see but if right I can find it. Right now is picture. migration, so now is the time. If you have tray feeders, mm -hmm. definitely get those tray feeders filled with a variety of food because birds like that that aren't going to typically come to our feeders that's where they're going to most likely come is to a tray feeder. Also, um, the bark butter that Peggy mentioned, get those that bark butter on your trees because those birds that never come to the feeders will come to a tree to get that or like our yellow belly sap sucker. Some of those birds will be coming back in mm. and they love that bark butter on a tray. So definitely those foods are ones to get back in right now. Okay. Hopefully we'll catch some some migrators as they're passing through. Exactly. Yeah. And rose-breasted grosbeaks, we've been getting reports of those passing through. Uh, the male is that black and white one with the beautiful rose breast, hence the rose-breasted grosbeak. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those the male kind of slips through unnoticed, but the or I'm sorry, the female mm. slips through unnoticed, but the male is just very obvious. Is there anything different that they eat? They love you safflower and black oil. Ah, okay. So again, um, and they're a like a big body bird. They're kind of a round body. So a, a feeder that um, a tray feeder is great for them or a larger tube feeder that they can land on facing forward. So like something that your cardinal would Ooh, eat. Okay. From. Oh, great. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, yesterday was the store's anniversary yes. for nine years in Lexington Park. That's fantastic. Yeah. Nine years, Lexington Park, five years, La Plata. Mm. That's great. Well, we're happy to have you here because that was certainly a need in the area. So it's uh, great to have you guys. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing your time with us on a Thursday night. It's always wonderful to have you with us, Barb. And um, this was great learning um, something new about our the charm of goldfinches. I like that a lot. <laughs> it's better than a murder of crows. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. 